All right, Shalom, I'm going to begin this lesson by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, and Ha'ashah, Waha, Raka, Kodash, which in the ancient Hebrew tongue would be the correct names of the Heavenly Father, His beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit. I also would like to give double honors to my teachers, the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much due honors and respect to the sense of brethren out there that's also laboring in this work. And as always, want to say Shalom to the believers. You know the Akim as well as the Akwaf, which will be you brothers along with the sisters that subscribe to this truth as well. So yeah, just wanted to go into another quick lesson, which this sitting right here is going to be simply entitled The Imperfections of the Perfect, which in contrast to the consensus of the people out there, there are actual spirits here on the planet Earth that would be considered perfect in the sight of the highest now to digest this concept if you will one must understand the idea of there being levels to perfection for one to be considered perfect is not reserved to the works of the flesh which by the way is a feat that's virtually impossible to accomplish here in his lifetime there is not one individual here on the planet earth that can make the claim that they are perfect in the flesh so what you're going to find out is that there's levels of perfection. For an example, finishing. Finishing is a form of perfection. Case in point, you might have one to begin to paint a portrait. And initially, that portrait can be perceived as potentially being a masterpiece. Yet, if that person doesn't finish painting that particular portrait, it's going to be considered imperfect. See? So finishing is a form of perfection. That's why when you read the book of St. John, the 19th chapter, when our Lord breathed his last breath and pretty much gave up the ghost, he made the statement, it is finished. Now when you go into that word finished right there in the Greek, the definition is to be a perfecter. See? So perfection is on display in the form of finishing. Also, Perfection is manifested by way of understanding. One can have perfect understanding concerning a thing. For an example, here at Great Millstone, we pride ourselves on teaching 100% truth. Well, for the brothers and sisters out there who subscribe to those teachings, you would be considered perfect in understanding. See? So, to meet those requirements, if you will, this would mean you would be perfect in the sight or Yahweh, which is an idea that's in harmony with the Holy Scriptures. Matter of fact, let's start off real quick right here in the book of 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. And the sixth verse, it says, Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. <laughs> See? Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. Yeah, let's read this again. It says, How be it we speak wisdom among them, <laughs> among them that are perfect. So you see here where when wisdom go forth and rest and settle on the hearts and minds of the people, well, for those who are able to receive that form of wisdom, if you will, they will be considered perfect in the sight of your how about me, how I? which would mean, in essence, the carriers of that wisdom, those who convey that information, those who teach this doctrine, which would be the testimony of our Lord, Yahweh Shah, would be considered perfect as well. <laughs> Matter of fact, let's prove that real quick before we continue. This is the book of Psalms, the 37th chapter. And the 37th verse, it says, Mark the perfect man. <laughs> Mark the perfect man and behold the upright for the end of that man is peace. Yeah, let's read this again. It says, Mark the perfect man. So you see here where the scriptures acknowledge the fact that you will have certain spirits here on the planet Earth that would be considered perfect. And you are encouraged to mark that man. Which, by the way, when you go into that word mark right there, the Hebrew word would be shamar, which means to watch or observe <laughs> and this is playing out 
in the form of this dynamic betwixt teacher and student, where you have certain men who have been raised up and sent forth with the perfect understanding of the scriptures. Well, it's encouraged for you to subscribe to that teaching, to partake in that counsel, to be willing to hear every discourse from those men. Well, in doing so, you are marking the perfect man. Again, it says, mark the perfect man and behold the upright for the end of that man is peace, which also goes into the idea of finishing, which again falls under the banner of perfection. One can have perfect understanding. This falls under the banner of perfection. Perfect understanding is the manifestation of being perfect as well as finishing. <laughs> Remember, the clause in the contract is to endure to the end. But overall, the point here is that there will be men here on the planet Earth that will be considered perfect. And you are to mark those men, meaning watch and observe those men. Which that perfect number would translate to the Lord's elect. Now, with this understood, the perfect will actually have imperfections. <laughs> and this is a very important concept to digest. It's very important to understand this idea, which serves as a gift and a curse, so to speak. On the one hand, we are comforted by knowing that we will have certain shortcomings, and although we fall short of the glory of our Lord Yahweh Shemah He will pardon us if we are numbered amongst that precious elk. But on the flip side, coming into this thing. And if you are sincere, of course, then naturally you're going to desire and seek to do the things to please your power. And in that event, there's going to be a lot of self-examination, which, by the way, there's a certain level of spiritual maturity that's required when examining oneself. Why? Because ultimately you're going to come to the conclusion that you are not perfect. And if you have set these lofty goals and expectations, then you're going to condemn yourself when you fall short. You know, you begin to beat yourself up, which can actually contribute to you falling from your hope in our Lord Yahweh Shah. Matter of fact, let's grab that real quick before we continue. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, the 14th chapter. And the second verse, it says, Blessed is he whose conscience have not condemned him. Yeah, let's read this again. It says, blessed is he whose conscience have not condemned him, which again is usually the results of one to come into this truth and begin to set these high and lofty goals for themselves. And once you are not able to meet those expectations, if you will, then you begin to beat yourself up. You begin to condemn yourself. And what's the danger in that? Well, let's read on. It says, and who is not fallen and who has not fallen from his hope in the Lord. So when one began to condemn himself, now you could potentially fall from your hope in our Lord Yahweh Shah, which is the results of one who understand not the idea of the perfect being imperfect in the flesh. This is a very important concept to digest. You have to adopt that idea that you're going to have shortcomings you're going to go off in the flesh. That's a part of this walk <laughs> in which the Apostle Paul echoed that sentiment, which brings me right here to the book of Romans, the seventh chapter. And starting at the 18th verse, it says, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. <laughs> yeah, let's read this again. It says, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. And again, these are the words of the Apostle Paul. And why is this important? Because the Apostle Paul would be numbered amongst the Lord's elect. And how do we know this? Well, when you go to the book of 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter around the eighth verse, the Apostle Paul speaking in the spirit made the statement that henceforth a crown is laid up for him. So indeed, the Apostle Paul would be numbered amongst the elect, which would make him perfect in the sight of Yahweh Shemeh Hawashah, 
Well, we read them right here where the Apostle Paul is acknowledging the fact that in his flesh <laughs> dwelleth no good thing. So this is an example. This is a case of the perfect having imperfections. And those imperfections will be by way of the flesh. See, again, it says, for I know that in me that is in my flesh, see, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. So the Apostle Paul is expressing this intense battle within, betwixt the spirit and the flesh. See? Verse 19, For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me, which that sin dwelleth in the flesh. And again, that's the resistance. Inwardly, you desire perfection, man. But being in this flesh, you're subject to vanity. And that's pursuant to the book of Romans, the eighth chapter, around the 20th verse. But call Halal Yahweh Why? Because he considers the inner man. As it is written, if the Lord was to mark iniquity, who would stand before him? So the Lord is judging us based upon the inner man, not the flesh. Matter of fact, let's grab some real quick. We're going to go back right here in the book of Psalms, the 51st chapter. And starting at the fifth verse, it says, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Yeah, what does the scripture mean when it says, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me? Well, simply put, this is concerned in the flesh, which is a manifestation of us going off by design. Let's read this again. It says, Behold, I was shapen, see, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth. <laughs> thou desirest truth in the inward parts. See, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. So the Lord is not considering the flesh. See, the Lord desirest truth in the inward parts. Which again captures the very essence of of this intense battle, this struggle betwixt the flesh and the spirit. The perfect, which will be the inner man, versus the imperfect, which symbolizes the flesh. See that? So when you go back here again to the book of Romans, the seventh chapter, and again, the 20th verse, it says, Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. See, which again is concerned in the flesh. It says, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. And that's the duality, if you will. All right, you're going to have the inner man in whom Yahweh Yahweh considers perfect versus the flesh, which pretty much manifests the imperfections of the perfect. See? Verse 22, it says, For I delight in the law of the Most High after the inward man. See? For I delight in the law of the Most High after the inward man. So again, it's the inner you that desires perfection. <laughs> Which is not accomplished in the flesh. Verse 23, But I see another law in my members, which symbolizes the flesh, warring against the law of my mind. Let's read this again. <laughs> it says, but I see another law in my members, which again is the flesh warring <laughs> or resisting against the law of my mind, which your mind represents the inner man. See, it says, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. And this is why this body is known as chains of darkness because you are actually held captive to sin. There's nothing you can do to overcome the shortcomings that come with the flesh. 
It can only be trumped by being perfect inwardly. See? Verse 24, O wretched man that I am. Hold up. This is the Apostle Paul speaking, which again would be numbered amongst the Lord's elect. But he's acknowledging the fact that he's wretched. <laughs> Why? Because of the flesh, which again is a manifestation of the imperfections of the perfect. See again, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me <laughs> from the body of this death, from the body of this death which again is concerned in the flesh. It says, I thank Yahweh Bashem Yahweh through Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, our Lord. So then with the mind, <laughs> the inner man, I myself serve the law of the Most High, but with the flesh, the law of sin. See? Which pretty much captures the idea of the imperfections of the perfect. So y'all yeah, just wanted to touch on that. Lord willing, it was edifying. Till the next time I say, Shalom.